G'day, it's Pete here, and today I wanted to look at what is bridge like in Australia. And what we're gonna look over is what common systems will you encounter? I wanna look back at one of the best players Australia's ever produced. Uh, what rules do you actually need to know when uh, you come here and might be different from where you actually play? What are the best tournaments to play? What are my personal favorites? And then we'll take a look at the system card and I'll just show you where you can get that, how you can fill it in and a few tidbits. So let's jump in and take a look at some common systems that you'll face when you play in Australia. By far the two most common systems that I see are standard and then also two over one is actually growing in popularity. You do see a few other systems such as Akol and Precision. Uh, you also see a few people play transfer responses to a club and that's actually growing in popularity too. One convention that you will face a lot is multi twos. So people will often use two diamonds as like a three way bid having a weak two and either major or 20 to 22 balanced. This is a very common uh, treatment there and you don't get written defense. So they're the common systems that you'll actually see when you play people in Australia. There is a broad spectrum as well because Australia has generally lacks rules about what you can actually play. So you can try out lots of things. And with that, I wanted to delve into the past and look at Australia's best player that they've ever produced. And this is Tim Serres. And he's actually got a few really awesome quotes that I want to delve into. And one of them is that most top players have mathematical ability. They don't need it. I know it is about 60 to 40 in my favor. I know the percentages by feel. The feeling of the table is more important than the mathematical chances. To read the people is more important. I know when to play the unexpected card to put you on the spot. And I really think that's great for just emphasizing that people think that you need to be really good at maths to actually be playing bridge. It's not really the case. What you really want to be able to do is just know this is better than the other thing. And realizing that there's a lot to this, the psychology of the game and testing people can be really, really important rather than knowing those precise percentages. But there was also a book uh, called Bowls Bridge uh, Tips. And here I wanted, to, I wanted to jump in and look at his bowls tip as well. And for this, it was in the long haul, you win at bridge by avoiding error rather than by being brilliant. The expert might display an occasional glimpse of genius or elegance, but he owes his preeminence to the fact that he makes fewer mistakes than his fellow players. So my bowls bridge tip is just this. When you can see that declarer is bound to succeed by normal play, look for a chance to give him a losing option. It stands to reason that if you consistently give your opponents a chance to go wrong, they'll take it sometimes. So about Tim Serres, he represented Australia back in the 1960s through to 80s and had an absolute dominant career through that. And he was by far the best player in Australia that the team selection to actually choose the Australian bridge team was like, Tim, you're on it automatically. You can choose your partner and the other four players that will make up the team actually have to do a trial there. So he was so good and so far above his peers that he got automatic selection to his team and was well regarded across the world as one of the uh, top players. He also managed to discover a squeeze uh, and there is actually a squeeze named after him, the series squeeze. Uh, here, I'll highlight this example here. So in this hand, what you can actually see is clubs are trumps and south is on lead. And what do you actually have to do to take the remainder of the tricks? You draw trumps at this stage, east gets the queen of hearts and the jack of spades. But if you play a diamond and trumpet with the ten of clubs, east has this really awkward problem. What do they do? Do they uh, throw that jack of spades away? Well, now the nine's a winner. Do they throw the queen of hearts away? Well, now the jack of hearts is a winner. Do they under trump? Well, then you can rough back to your hand and your diamond's good. If they do throw away a heart, then for instance, you play the jack of hearts and they have the same problem. Do they throw away their winning jack of spades or do they under trump? Uh, if they ever trump the thing, you over trump and your diamond's good. So I just thought it was really cool and not many people actually managed to get a squeeze named after them. So if you're coming to Australia and you want to know what general rules do you need, what do you actually need to announce or what do you actually need to alert? So in Australia, you need to announce the strength of your one no trump bid and also what your length of one club is, or if it's a strong club, you just say strong. You also need to alert transfers. You don't announce these. You also alert anything that's artificial that isn't a bid by the opponent's suit or doubles. 
and you don't need to alert Stamen. So if you bid a Stamen, you don't announce it, you don't alert it, that's fine. Let's jump in and take a look at what are the best tournaments you want to play in Australia. And I think the top tournament in Australia would be nearly unanimous. And this is the Gold Coast Congress. This is a fabulous Congress for many, many reasons. Number one is the location. It's just in an absolutely spectacular area. Fabulous for tourism and a uh, nice, warm, beautiful spot. But not only uh, is the location awesome, but also the quality is really high. You get lots of really top players to come in and play this. But it's not only for the top players also. There are lots of restricted fields as well. So here, uh, master points are a little bit different uh, in every country in the world, basically. There's no uniform master point system. Uh, but here's a little breakdown of how it might actually compare to your country or maybe somewhere where you actually know. Uh, but the Gold Coast Congress has lots of different uh, segmented fields that you can play in. Uh, you can have under 1500 events, under 500 events, under 300 events, under 50. Uh, but also it is fabulous for absolute novices. There is an under 10 master point rookie event that you can come in. So if you're thinking of playing your very first tournament ever, this is a great one to do as well. But what if you want to bring your partner who doesn't play bridge? They also look after that. There is a bridge widow section where they can help do some tourism. They can check it out. They really look after everyone. And also just everything about this is set up to be social. And I just love socialization in bridge and the social atmosphere, going out for dinners and uh, seeing people after the bridge. It is really, really well set up for that and you're really close to the beach as well. So the Gold Coast Congress is by far the best tournament in Australia and I couldn't recommend it enough. But I've also got a couple of other personal favorites as well. And uh, this is the Tasmanian Bridge Festival and also the Barrier Reef Congress. Now, these are both in spectacular locations. They're really social. The quality isn't quite as high. So if you're looking for a more fun, relaxed tournament, but still want to get that competitive vibe going, these tournaments are really great. I can strongly recommend both going to the Tasmania Festival, which alternates between Launceston and Hobart each year, and also the Barrier Reef Congress, which rotates between four spots are along the Great Barrier Reef. These are both fabulous for touristing and checking out as well. Lovely spots, couldn't recommend them enough. And finally, if you want to play Bridge in Australia, you might want to check out the system cards here. I'll leave a link down below about where they are, but uh, here's what they actually look like. The main important things are sort of in the middle here. On the left here, uh, which is often the back of the system card will show you the leads and signals and in the middle on the right is people's opening two bids. That's really all I ever look at system cards for anyway, uh, but you can check the link down below. Anyway, thanks all for watching. Bye.